you're watching Plant Identification Through Personal Investigation with Angeline Whitmire. This is episode number six called Using Photography for Plant Identification. In this episode, I discuss the benefits of taking photos to help with plant identification, the types of photos to take, and the various angles from which to photograph a plant. I invite you to visit identifythatplant.com for more plant identification resources and information. There are lots of reasons to take photos of plants. You don't have to carry a field guide with you on walks when you have your camera available to take photos. Getting those photos from different angles and distances provides the documentation you need for identifying an unknown plant at a later time when you're back at home and searching several field guides. Photographs are another way to preserve a plant without actually taking a specimen from the field. Photographs lend themselves to sharing what you've seen with others. And maybe your friend or plant identification mentor can then help you to identify the plant. The camera can catch details you might miss initially. When you use the zoom function on the computer or the display function of your camera to get a closer look at a plant, fresh details become evident. A close, zoomed-in photo of a plant makes it larger than life, which becomes especially helpful for times when you don't have a hand lens in your pocket or when you are unable to get close to a plant, like when you don't feel able to bend down or you don't really want to climb a steep embankment or it's not appropriate to clamber over a fence to get closer. By taking photos and saving them for yourself, you can create a life list of unusual plants, especially those plants which cannot or should not be picked or transplanted. When I take photos of an unknown plant, I usually shoot to capture the plant from four distance levels. First, I take a longer range view of the overall plant within its habitat. Second, I shoot a closer, medium range view of the plant. I include an entire stem and leaves, or a flower and its stem, or an arrangement of roots. Next, I go closer for a short range view. This time, I photograph a close up of the flower, of the plant's leaf, of the stem, and of the pattern of leaves arranged on the stem. If I can, I will also go in very close to see such things as the details of a flower's reproductive parts, the leaf veining pattern, or the hairs on a stem. Here are some photographic angles to consider when shooting a plant. First, get the side shot of the flower or fruit. Second, look straight down into the flower or onto the leaf. Capture the underside of the leaf, especially if it has notable features, such as a much lighter color than the top surface, or small hairs on its surface. For the plant's supporting parts, get photos of its stem or branch, and a tree's bark pattern. Try looking at the plant with the sun shining behind and through the plant's parts. This creates an outline of the part with a possible see-through effect. Here's an example of this type of photo, a view of a backlit leaf of St. John's wort, which emphasizes the plant's perforations. You can photograph the plant in full sun to highlight details. You will want to avoid a combination of sun and shade in the same photo, since this creates a sharp contrast which the camera has difficulty reading. In fact, if you have the camera on its automatic setting, it will attempt to average the light reading that it sees. With the extreme contrast between the full sun and the dark shade, the entire image usually ends up looking not so good. Take a photo with a plant in full shade on a sunny day, or shoot photos on a cloudy day, which also has lots of brightness to the atmosphere. You can create a shadow on a plant which is in full sun by blocking the sunlight with your body or a jacket. Two ideal times of day to photograph plants include the early morning and late evening. Capturing a plant with a rosy glow of sunrise or sunset makes for especially lovely photos with spectacular lighting. Have you taken photos to identify plants? Which of these tips do you anticipate practicing the next time you shoot a photo of an unknown plant? 
I invite you to respond at identifythatplant.com. Look for the blog post titled, Using Photography for Plant Identification. The next podcast discusses the type of key you may find in a field guide and how to use that key. Visit identifythatplant.com for more plant identification resources and information about how you can confidently master these skills of correct plant identification. You've been watching Plant Identification Through Personal Investigation with Angeline Whitmire.